All right, all right, guys. Dreadnoughts out of the box and back with another review. And we're going to be looking at the Star Wars, the Black Series, Captain Phasma from the new Force Awakens. And I'm just super stoked to finally get my hands on this figure. Uh, I've been looking for it high and low. It's kind of been my holy grail for the last month. Was unable to get it at GameStop when it came in stock in my local area before they sold out. Was able to score this one late one night on Toys R Us website. And it came up for about 10 minutes before selling out. I actually ordered two, but I got an order cancellation email, sadly, the next day from Toys R Us, stating they were low in stock and only shipping me one. But at this point, I'm just glad to have it so we can finally take a look at it. You can see here on the packaging, same thing we've seen with the new Force Awakens Waves. Nice artwork here at the bottom. Nothing going on on this side. And then we've got the Wave number on this side, Captain Phasma number 6. And there's a look at the back. Very short bio. They're not giving anything away here, but you can pause it if you want to read it. So let's crack this thing open and take a look at and it. And here's Phasma out of the packaging. Looking pretty sick overall, i got to say. I'm definitely liking what Hasbro did here. Overall, I like the character look. That mean chrome stormtrooper. Uh, you know, she's big, she's tall. I like the subtle touches of the gold blaster and the cape or the cloak. Looks good. You know, overall, I just love this character design. The figure is certainly not perfect, and I'll get to the issues I had with it here in a moment. But overall, i got to say I'm liking this figure. And as we get a closer look here at the figure, you can see some very nice detail in here. At first glance, I thought there would be a lot of reused parts from the Stormtrooper from the first wave. But actually, it's not. You know, this is different sculpting in this head. Some nice line detail in there. You can see the goggles look good. Some nice little texture down in there around the mask nice little detail or nodule in there you know just liking it overall I like that color choice they used you know it looks good that chrome that silver looking at the back of the head here you can see a little bit of marvelization but not much and there's just a slight crack in there in the paint uh, but it's really not noticeable uh, especially from a distance and as we look through the chest here that same paint app they didn't skimp out goes through and through Looks really good. Nice detail here. This insignia looks good here, a rank or whatever. Uh, nice little details sculpted in in every part of the arms here. The hands look good. You definitely see some nice detail and silver paint apps there on the fingers. You know, the pouches are clean. You know, it just looks good. I'm liking it overall. Same thing through the legs. You can see a little bit of paint here on the knee, some bleed over, a little bit of black there, but. You can see the ribs are sculpted in to, around the knee pads. And the feet even have some nice detail. Looks like plating around here. Looks good. Got peg holes at the bottom. And as we look at the back here in the cloak or the cape, you can see some nice detail sculpted in. It is a very soft material here. So that bends really easy. And we'll look at the back there in just a second. But you can see some nice patchwork in here that's been sculpted in. You know, we saw this in my three and three quarter inch reviews, this same thing going on. And you can see like some straps sculpted in there. Just looks good. I like that red line work around the edges. Very nice, very nice. And then if we look at the back here, and this cape probably is removable, you know, if you're willing to risk removing the head. And we'll get a little light back here. You can see the back there has the tube for the lightsaber from the originals, which I'm not sure why they kept in the design. I mentioned that in one of my other uh, videos, but yeah, nice sculpting through the joints here on the back, nice wrinkles in the back of the pants. Just nice sculpt work and paint all the way through. You know, not much to complain about there. And as we look at the blaster here, you can see it has that goldish tint to it, you know, or light brass. You know, it looks good. It stands out from the silver on the character, so I like it. You know, and Hasbro's done a good job with these weapons with the detail and paint apps. They haven't skimped out lately on this. This is a reuse, and I'll show you the other one here. That's the one that came with the Snow Trooper. You can see it is repainted uh, for Phasma here. But I like it. I think they did a good job with the black paint apps. You know, and it's a well sculpted blaster. Got a lot of nice detail in it overall. It does fit in her hand really well. Uh, the only thing I would gripe about here. If she doesn't have a trigger finger, but you know it fits snug and looks good in there. It also has the clip here, so you can stick it in the side of her leg here, like so. And she can wear that on the side pretty well. So yeah, I'm liking it. 
Good job by Hasbro overall again. And as we look at articulation here, the head doesn't really move up much at all. It's hindered by the cape, moves down about that much. Uh, can pivot a little bit to the side. Uh, it does rotate around actually rather easily, and that's one of my pet peeves with this figure. If I had to say something negative, it has extremely loose joints overall. Uh, the arm will move out that far. Uh, it does rotate all the way around really loosely. Of course, this side does not uh, because it's hindered by the cloak over here. It has single jointed elbows. It does rotate. It has a hinge on the wrist. Moves in that far, out that far, and they do rotate around. It does have an ab crunch or diaphragm joint. Only moves forward about that much. Moves back about that much. Uh, does pivot on there and does rotate around. No waist rotation. It does have upper leg rotation. And these are actually the only part of the joints that are tight. Everything else is actually fairly loose. Can't really move the leg up at all because it's hindered here with the belt and this plate. Uh, can move back somewhat until the cape holds it back. Has double jointed knees. And you kind of have to play with these to get them up behind the cape like so. Uh, no cut at the calf. Feet don't really rotate. Does have a nice rocker on it though. And you can pivot the foot all the way down and comes up about that far. And here she is next to a part of a battalion of first order stormtroopers from the first wave. And you can see here she's towering over these guys. I'm loving the scale. She's supposed to be big and bad and we know she's tall. She's measuring in at six and three quarter inches tall. So great size and scale to this figure. Next here she is in comparison to Kylo Ren. And I got to say I'm loving the way they look together. I think they complement each other well. She's big and bad and he's sleek and cunning. And I just can't wait to get these guys on the shelf together. And here she is next to the original big, bad, tall, and scary Darth Vader here on the left. And they scale almost at the same height. She may actually be putting Vader to a little bit of shame here because she might just be just a smidge taller, actually. Lastly, here she is next to her Game of Thrones counterpart, and I'm liking the way they scale together. If you think of Brianna Tarth actually putting this armor on, that's about the right size for her body. And, of course, over here is the guy she beat to a bloody pulp, the Hound. So, wrapping up here, guys, I know everybody's losing their minds to get this figure. I'd say be patient. Don't pay the high prices on the aftermarket. Don't buy into the scalpers here. Camp out the websites if you need to, like me, if you're dedicated. If not, I think we'll see this character in wide release. Um, overall, I got to say she's a buy because she is iconic. The look of her, I think she's going to transcend the movies. You know, like Boba Fett or Darth Maul. She may not get a lot of screen time. They may kill her off in the first movie, but I think we'll be seeing this character look for years to come. And I think if you miss out on this figure, it's going to be like missing out on a Boba Fett or a Darth Maul or something. So, you know, for that fact and that fact alone, I rate her a buy. She does have great sculpting. The paint is good on the figure, uh, you know, other than the one sloppy area I had on the knee. You know, and for you guys that hate soft goods, you know, this is going to be right up your alley with the plastic cape here. The bad side is she does have extremely loose joints. Hopefully Hasbro will fix that before we see wide release in Walmarts and Targets this month. You know, otherwise, if not, that, you know, it's going to be an issue. And I hate that, but... You know, overall, I just like the way the character looks with my other figures, and it just wouldn't be complete with my Stormtroopers to not have her there. So for me, you know, it was a must-have. Um, anyway, hope you guys liked the video. If so, please give me a big thumbs up. Hey, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. I've got more Black Series reviews coming, Marvel Legends, some DC Direct stuff or DC Collectible stuff coming as well. So plenty of stuff coming down the pipeline, so subscribe if you haven't already. We're trying to build those numbers up. Facebook, Twitter, Toy Arc, and eBay auctions going on currently. Links in the description below, as always. Thank you guys so much for watching. I do appreciate everything you do and all the kind comments. We'll see you soon. And sculpt overall, some nice line work. At first glance, you think that the... the, 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 the